Mr. Bigley. Hey there guys and gals, it's Gerbigly with another episode of Gaming with Gerbigly and I'm once again playing the game Gone Home. I'm very excited to be back to this because this game has seemed so unique so far. It's super spooky. Honestly, it's way spookier than I thought, and I guess this was built off of an Amnesia mod, like Amnesia The Dark Descent, one of those original YouTube horror games that was really big. I, I had no idea. I had zero idea that this was built off of that engine, but it you can feel the atmosphere. It's got that same first-person exploration feel to it. But at the same time, I have no idea what's going on. I've just returned home from apparently an overseas trip. No one is home. All these lights are on. The TV was on. There was food laying out. Everything looks like it's in disrepair. Apparently, my sister ran away, I guess, something like that. Or she had a note that said that she was missing. I don't know if she ran away or was kidnapped or hurt or something. But alongside of that, something else is going on here. There's a lot of talk about how there was was like a murder in this house at some point and there's definitely this creepy vibe and part of it I think is the game has done a really great job of making me doubt myself it's made me second guess what's actually happening without revealing too much of the plot but giving me enough to learn about the characters a bit and I like that a lot uh, also the fact that I'm in, in a completely unfamiliar house and things like are kind of dark and creepy is awful. I hate that. I like that I can turn on the lights everywhere. There are electric lights, which is good. Although it did talk about in the last episode about how some of the light wiring is a bit finicky and it might make the lights flicker or something. And we've already seen a couple flickering lights and I hate flickering lights. So I'm extra careful right now. Very spooked out. That's some loud rain. True stories. I was a teenage drag queen. Fresh readers tell us about their worst moments. Uh, I, I love the vibe also. I love that it's in the 90s because I grew up in the 90s and all of this stuff is so familiar. Sarah Hulse not gathering moss. Nice. Okay. Oh, boy. That thunderstorm still raging in the background. Apparently, the weather's really bad. Also, I don't know. We can pick up tissue boxes just like in Amnesia. We can pick up anything we want and throw it. These look suspicious. Grab lid. All right. Throw that. I don't care. Grab Dad's second book. Oh, okay, so Dad, yeah, he was a writer. The Accidental Pariah, Terrence L. Greenbrier. So that other book we found was his book after all. But yeah, being alone in an unfamiliar house definitely gives me the spooks. A message from our future saved the president's life once, but within the next 24 hours, there will be another attempt and the lines of communication are down. A James Bond for today's audience and compelling. A thriller worth its salt. Cool. Awesome stuff. So dad was like a at least semi-successful writer, although now he seems to be like a copywriter for other stuff. Um, ooh, I can grab a whole bunch of books. Is there other stuff? Oh, there's a bunch of other things. Uh-oh, is this dad's porno magazines? Oh, dad. <laughs> Magazine for men. Gentlemen, Japan's bloody war and dolphins, Moscow by night, drugs, prostitution, the mafia, the new rules of love, ladies in the ring, the, rim, the women of wrestling. Dad was a big old Playboy fan. Ah, uh, dad, hiding it under your book. I was going to say, like, is he ashamed of this book? Is this why this one's hidden away versus the other one? That was like sort of prominently laid out as like a reminder of the good, oh, the good work that he could do. That damn thunder will get me every time. A stranger under my roof, but dad was just hiding his dirty mags. All right, that's not, oh, that's kind of scary. This is foreboding. A stranger under my roof, I'm here. I'm a, I feel like a stranger under my own roof right now. The number one best-selling advice book for parents of teens. Oh, it's an advice book. I thought it was going to be like a spooky thing, like there's a stranger living in the walls in my house, which was a common trope of horror things for a while. A stranger under my roof, understanding teens. The teen years are fraught with change of all types, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, but these changes don't affect just affect your teen. Your teen's turbulent years are a challenge for parents as well. Maybe the biggest challenge you've faced since having children. Oh, man. So this is like a, a pop psychology book. Uh, obviously, the parents were having trouble dealing with our sister because of all of her like sort of quirky behaviors it sounded like she wasn't very good at making friends she was hanging out with people that her parents didn't really like agree with or didn't agree with her hanging out with and uh, all that kind of stuff can be stressful as a parent because you're like I don't relate to the kids anymore and clearly that's the type of parents that they had all right the secret letter 0451 I bet that's for the safe in the other room dear Terrence David asked me to write you regarding the reviews you've been submitting the last few 
months. Ah, yes, so he's like a review writer. Frankly, they're becoming more trouble than they're worth. From an editing standpoint, there's a word limit. It's your job to stay under it, not mine to cut back to it. Uh, even then, it's becoming harder and harder to weed out the tangents and non sequiturs from the usable copy without heavy rewrites. The readers of Home Theater Aficionado want to hear about the quality and value of the hardware, not ruminations on your childhood. Man, this is tough. Like getting sort of those like editors and publishers notes when you're a writer is sometimes the most demoralizing thing, especially when it's put in such a condescending way. I'm all about constructive criticism, but when it starts like taking personal jabs, that's when it gets annoying with writing. It's why I'm not a writer anymore. <laughs> if it were up to me, I wouldn't be writing this letter. I'd just be cutting you loose. There's tons of guys half your age who would take half your rate to write stuff I could actually use. Man, you're a jerk, dude. Uh, <laughs> But David's known you for a long time and he's the boss, so I'm giving you one more shot on his say-so. You should write him a nice note thanking him for his patience and generosity. Look through your old stuff and start submitting reviews like that again. Then everybody will be happy. Brent Kurtwood. You know what? Screw you, Brent. Yeah, Br you sound like a Brent, honestly. No offense to any Brents out there. But honestly, as far as like review writing goes, I get it. I get it. Dad was probably really, really like annoyed at the fact that he's being told to write these static, sort of non creative, crappy. Oh, yeah, I can zoom in. I forgot I could do that. Um, these crappy, like not creative uh, reviews of products, like uh, just so he can get by and continue to do his own creative writing. I already forgot the code, by the way. It's 0451. 0451. Oh, man, Dad, you didn't do a very good job of hiding any of this stuff in here. Let's see what's in here. 0451. I probably could have done that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Why am I not thinking very well? 04. Oh, wait, it's 451. Not using my brain. There we go. God, did anyone hear that? Hello? <laughs> All right, uh, read this document. Dear Mr. Mason, please find and close your original document and a typed copy of your records. The notarized copy has been filed at our offices. Thank you for entrusting our firm with this important matter. Sincerely, Jeffrey Wise, Kublek, and Wise Attorneys at Law. What's going on legally? Will and Testament. I, Oscar, oh, it's the will. I, Oscar Mason, uh, possessing full confidence of mine and memory and after full survey of valued items to my name, do hereby declare this document, my last will and testament, the following shall hold true upon my passing. One, I declare that I am a lifelong resident of Boone County, that I am unmarried and have no children. Is this our crazy uncle who went nutso axe murderer? I declare that I have no, he left a will to us. I declare that I have no outstanding debts to my name, to any creditors living or dead. I do hereby bequeath every item of value of which I may die possessed, including the dwelling and surrounding acres located at Arbor Hill, as well as any and all personal properties and money and accounts to my nephew, Terrence L. Greenbrier, Jr. of Ellis County. So it was our great uncle. I see. In the event that said Terrence L. Greenbrier Jr. should predecease me, then and in such an event, the bequest, uh, the bequest to him shall fall, and the same is bequeathed to his children as ordered by age and competence. I uh, subscribe my name. Yeah, sign blah, blah, blah. Okay, and this is his handwritten note. So our father was left the creepy stuff. Our father was left all of the stuff uh, by our uncle who the school children are very mean about and say mean things that he is crazy bonkers banana boy. Man, oh man, this game is so good at like messing with my imagination. Grab a bunch of coupons, save 25 cents. Heck yeah, that's a deal. I mean, coupons are basically free money. It's pretty good stuff. Uh, but I thought I saw someone down the like hallway here, like poking around the corner. But it was, I think, I hope it was just my imagination. United States Department of Agriculture, U.S. Uh, National Forestry Manual, uh, Northwest Regional Prescribed Burn Procedures and Precautions. Oh, okay, well, that's good to have. Don't get burnt. All right, so here's the end of the hallway. This is a damn big house. Damn, damn, damn big. Oh, boy. Spooky dark room. Lights. Camera action. Let's turn on every light. Make it nice and welcoming in here. That's some interesting art. What the hey -o? Very abstract. Cool stuff. Oh, is this like a record room? Are these all vinyls or magazines? Oh, I hope they're vinyls, dude. That's so cool. Big old vinyl room. I've always wanted a house that's like big enough to have a vinyl room in it. Some of the lights won't turn on. That's fine. Oh, that would be so cool to have a vinyl room. I love vinyls. I think they're awesome. I have a record player myself. 
and I do enjoy collecting like game soundtracks and like orchestral stuff. Oh my God, look at all these. These are so cool. Oh man, shot glasses. Hell yeah, take a sip, glug glug. Get me out of this nightmare house. It's really creepy here. Dr. Jitters, <laughs> all the caffeine in it gives you them jitters. All right, so this is like the cool like, yeah, it's like, oh yeah. Oh, Dad was into some eerie, cool, spooky sound and stuff. The Dave Brubeck Quartet. Oh. Love it. Love it. Dad, good music, man. I see. I listen to this kind of stuff. Open the folder. Read this assignment. Reproductive system worksheet six. Samantha. Let's see how you're doing. Lord, two stories. The events are all out of order. Get a sheet of lined paper. Write reproduct. Oh, about the menstrual cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, uh, hmm. She wrote a story about, like, being reproduced? That's weird. Sing <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, she sets up to join the Polish resistance. Uh, it was an incredible how the female body knows how to prepare for pregnancy. So Sam wrote some, like, super sarcastic, this is loud music. Uh, it's wrote a super sarcastic assignment and her teacher was mad about it. That's funny. That's the kind of stuff I used to do all the time too. And I'd get those see me notes <laughs> from my angry teacher. That's funny. Sam, I like your sense of humor. She's really like quirky and great. Ooh, look at the, is this the good stuff? Oh, the good stuff. This is Hanrahan Irish whiskey. Ooh, I like a good Irish whiskey. Nice. Dad, keeping the good stuff here. More dad's second books. He has a lot of copies. I feel like his second book didn't sell quite as well as his first one and maybe felt like a failure for that. Those sophomore slumps are tough as a writer or a musician or any creative, really. From the desk of Donald Fripp's publisher. Uh, Dear Mr. Greenbrier, I write to inform you that unfortunately Mercury Books will be unable to publish your follow-up to The Accidental Pariah. Despite the low sales of The Accidental Savior, we went ahead with publication of the second books of hopes of the John Russell series catching on. However, sales of the second book have, in fact, fact been lower than those of the first and so our stewardship of the series must end here yeah so he was a failed writer in his mind he was a failure but dude you got two books published that's an amazing thing but i understand how it feels once you reach a certain level dropping below that makes you feel like unfulfilled in a way so i guess i kind of understand that a little bit it's been a pleasure working as your publisher and we wish you and john russell the best in your future endeavors that's sad sorry dad it's a bummer. So dad was a big old drinky boy because of that stuff. He had a really nice bar. I like your bar, dad. I like the what you've done with the house, dad. It's been pretty cool. Let's start. Oh, of course, it's going to make that noise when I walk in here. More records. Heck yeah. All right. More books, more books. Man. Oh, dad, I'm so sorry. This is a sad story. Like Sam... Sam was a sad, sad girl. Dad was a sad, sad dad. Was what? What's the story with mom? Was mom a sad, sad? Katie, please tell mom and dad sorry about the stuff that's missing. Yeah, so Sam like stole a bunch of stuff. Well, not stole, I guess technically, you know, we're all family. But, but Sam took a bunch of stuff on her adventure as she ran away. Anything in here I can look at? No? Still getting this eerie vibe from the game, but now I'm more curious. I'm more invested in this family's life. I want to push on. Hi, Lonnie. So if you wanted to come over to my house still this afternoon, that would be cool. I can drive. It's kind of far, but I can drive you home too. So hopefully that's fine. Right back and leave this in my locker if you still want to. And we can meet in the parking lot after six. Samantha. Yeah, I'm totally in. See you there. Then I'm going to kick your butt. Get ready. Ah, Street Fighter. I like that. Cute little note back and forth. Oh, no, I didn't want to so open it. you know it. what they oh. say about the best light plans of my Sam, you scared the shit out of me. Yeah, turns out it applies to Street Fighter too. At least I worked up the courage to walk into the 7-Eleven and ask for a turn. But yeah. all that practice at home did not exactly translate in the wild. Right? Arcade sticks are but different. I was finished getting my butt kicked. I followed them outside while they smoked. <laughs> and that was when she asked me if I was that psycho Stop house. Stop mentioning girl. the psycho house, please. But then she said she's always really wanted to see the psycho house. Ah, edgy. Her name is Lonnie. She's coming over tomorrow. Awesome. So you made a friend. Ah, oh, yeah. Good stuff. All right, Sam. Well, get better, Street Fighter. Katie, please, whatever you found, don't tell Mom and Dad, the attic. 
What about the attic? Is that... Oh, boy. What about the attic? Now I got the foreboding... Did you kill Lonnie? Is Lonnie's body up there? Is Sam... Ah, uh, Did something... Oh, boy. Like, what happened? What do you mean, don't tell mom and dad? That's foreboding. God. Family photos. Seriously. Family paintings. Very, very bizarre time in our history. Okay, well, let's continue on, I guess. Uh, was there anything in here? I didn't really look. Oh, yeah, I forgot we also have a map. We have a map. I don't want to turn off the light, but I do want to look at my map. All right, how do I look at my map? Here we go. Map. Map time. All right, so we've looked through all of this stuff. All of this has been discovered. This is locked. Two locked doors. Oh, to the basement. Oh, I don't want to go down in the basement anyway. So now, we, do we have to go up to the attic now? We have to go to the, at least the upstairs. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. I'm so glad there's so many light sources. I don't care about wasting electricity. I just want to see and not be creeped out. Uh, pack of cards. Ooh, cool. I love the amount of detail in this game. A catchy playing cards. Ah, we bought these from Japan, I see. Maybe took them from our studies abroad or our trips abroad because I, Katie, am the explorer. I've been all over the world. I'm so worldly. I brought back a nice pack of cards. Boone County registered. Controlled burn scheduled for Boone County. All right, so they lit part of the forest on fire on purpose to, like, you know, raise some of it. Plumes of smoke will rise above the northeastern region of Boone County over the part, the better part of the next week. Oh, God, that damn thunder. As part of a forestry service run controlled burn of overgrown sections of the Flint Lock National Forest. Forestry crews have been preparing the area for months. The burn operation will take place between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and possibly into Thursday, depending on speed of progress, according to the forestry service. In addition to removing dead and overgrown vegetation that will lead to wildfires and drier months, the operation will serve as a valuable training tool for the forest forestry and firefighting personnel involved, said senior conser uh, conservationist Janice Greenbrier. Ah, her mom. So that's why this was highlighted and kept. Smoke will likely linger in the area throughout the following weekend. So mom helped, like, uh, do this cool stuff that helped the whole community. Mom, you're great. You're a cool person. Oh, my God. Thank you for the strategically placed light switches. Read personal calendar. Weekly planner. All right. Couples bowling, cooking class, take apron, bat ballroom dancing, couples bowling, catering, or cooking class, ballroom, oh, only catering class. They only crossed off some of the stuff. Cook the big meal for whoever, Katie, Katie is this for me? Someone and Sam. Something. All right, so uh, dad, because I'm assuming dad and mom were like absolutely like... Just, uh, I don't know, overwhelmed with their work. Maybe they weren't able to do all the, their fun couple stuff. Examine form. Notice of temporary personal transfer, or personnel transfer. Bruce Pendleton. The aide in the upcoming prescribed burn operation, a ranger with expertise in the procedures being transferred to the station at Flintlock. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Overseeing Flintlock Forestry. Senior conservative, uh, conservation, or con conservationist. I can't read today. Janice Greenbrier is charged with the supervision of transferred. All right, cool. So our mom, she was the big head honcho with all of this stuff. She was cool. Very cool lady. More creepy drawers. Cassette case. Bratmobile. Cool. Body. Oh. It's weird hanging out. What was that girls. creaking, squeaking? Was around ever since I was little. And other uh -huh. girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like instantly just right. Yeah? I gave her the grand psycho house tour and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. There you go, your home turf. It was like, I don't know. I finally found someone I feel normal around. That's good. That's good to find. She over home and she gave me this tape and said, You have got to listen to this. I haven't stopped playing it since. Awesome. A good old mixtape. Very good stuff. All right. Well, not a mixtape, just a copy tape. Radiation area. Keep out who's. Oh, man. Why is this still left on? All right. Is this going to play? Can I? Oh, can I put the tape? I bet I can put the tape in that cassette player, in that, that stereo. Yeah, let's go try to do that. I really don't like the, the creaking and stuff that's going on. 
Don't like that. Put it in. Oh, that's just the tape case. Ah, boo! I I must I have a, oh here it is. I have a feeling that this is Sam's room, not my room, because it's all messy and punky. Okay, I can get down with it. Oh yeah! Adventurous the cat. That's loud. Oh yeah, some sick ass 90s girl rock. I like it, I dig it. I like it a lot. It's like garage band stuff. <laughs> I unfortunately said the F word, so now my video is getting demonetized. Great, thanks a lot for that. But here's the thing. So here's the thing. Let's turn on more lamps, because I don't like how not bright it is in this room. All right, here is the thing. I feel like they're setting this up. Oh, she took the Super Nintendo. You didn't take Adventurous Cat though, what's wrong with you? Um, she, this is, she's clearly like infatuated with this Lonnie character. And I feel almost like it's setting it up and the dark twist is gonna be, oh yeah, I liked her so much that I became super obsessed with her and then I killed her and now her body's in the attic. I don't know, maybe something like that? Chun Li moves. Oh yeah, here's the actual lightning kick, 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 kick. Oh, I love all this stuff. Love it. All the fighting codes, all the combos. Whoa. Oh, this is one of those seeing eye things. You gotta like cross your eyes to see it. Can I do it? Can't do it. <laughs> Not on the screen. I like that though. Ooh, what cartridge is this? Super Spitfire. Oh my God, I wanna put, what the? That sounded like footsteps. Stay away. Stay away. I'm not, I, I quit playing Amnesia for a reason. I couldn't handle it. Journey of Crystal. These games look dope. I play the crap out of these. These are, look very cool. All right. Uh, anything else? No, no more Super Nintendos for me. I just want to look at the Super Nintendos. Ooh, look at all these girls. Hello, 90s ladies. How are we doing? I haven't had that much to drink, Jodie Foster. How many fingers am I holding up? You better not have been reading my secret diary again. Uh, here you go, Mitten. Have some pate. Gross. Mrow. <laughs> oh, goofy stuff. Ah, another, another code that I don't have. All right, we'll find it somewhere in this mess of crap. Read this slip. Samantha Greenbrier, year 11. Teacher Fletcher, period five. This is for shop, metalworking. C minus. Ah, barely passing there, Sam. Not a challenging assignment. Metal plaque for family portrait, reasonable subject, but not complex. When I said that mom and dad should be replaced with parents' names, I did not mean just add them underneath. Acceptable leveling on edges. Uh, show more pride in work. Aw. So it sounds like Sam was like the typical teenager who was just like, I'm not really interested in like doing my schoolwork. I'll do enough to pass, I guess. But is that gonna break? Dang it, that would have been so cool if that would break. <laughs> but uh, really like didn't want to invest themselves to get A's and B's and exceed at, or excel at their schoolwork, which I understand. That's a very typical uh, teenage thing when you feel sort of directionless. Sam, I think the creative writing track world. Why? Why is there fucking walking sounds? Why? And there's more X-Files stuff. Stop doing that to me, game. I'm just trying to be cool. The creator writing track would be perfect for you, Mrs. Blacklock. Ah, uh -uh, cool. Go to college. All right, English creative writing. Three students from each track will be offered a full scholarship. Ah, so we had a teacher who was like, hey, I see some potential in you. I want you to get better. So here you go. Try to, try to, try this out. It might be cool. No, don't turn that off. We need lots of lights. Lots of lights, grab button. The Misfits. Oh, I like that, it's spelled Miss. More girl power stuff. Very, very cool. Just stop, stop with the squeaking. Is that from the attic? What if Sam's hiding in the attic this whole time? God dang. Salmon Magazine, Groove, exclusive AIDS in Africa. Yep, that was a big thing in the 90s, still is, honestly. Soul Asylum Live, Eddie Vedder, Weezer, Max and Martine wanted for the murder of Straight Edge. Don't murder Straight Edge, don't do it. I don't know, I don't judge anyone who does stuff or doesn't do stuff, just do you. The Brother 150, of course, it's a Phaedrus. <laughs> awesome. So this is, this is the one me and my dad are building. Want to go for a ride when it's done? Oh, I bet Lonnie gave us 
that note or gave Sam that note. It was like, hey, we're building a sweet ass motorcycle. You want it? All right. Disciplinary referral. Ah, geez. For uh, Yolanda DeSoto. What? Oh, Lonnie. Yolanda, I bet. I bet that's, this is for Lonnie, and she came over and she threw her trash out in, in Sam's garbage can. Mr. Benchley observed Mrs. De, or Ms. DeSoto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on the front. Oh, poo. A large beer can labeled F F Pab's Blue Ribbon. Oh, that's it? It was, a, it was a beer brand shirt? I guess you shouldn't be wearing that in high school. Ms. DeSoto was sent to the guidance counselor's office. Action taken by faculty. Ms. DeSoto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out. Man, I hated when they used to do that back in school. I don't know if they still make people do that, but they used to do that back in, like, middle school, high school. Change into a shirt from her gym locker or be suspended for the rest of the day. Ms. Uh, DeSoto chose suspension. Ms., uh, her father was called out there. Uh... But, oh, was called, but there was no reason and no or no answer and no answering machine. God, I can't I can't read today. I really can't. Sorry, guys. Miss DeSoto must return this form tomorrow, signed by her father. No parent signature. Ah, she just threw it out. She's like, I don't give a poop. I don't give a poop, Pap. All right. So that is uh, back into the hall. Wow, cool. Institute of Art Exhi Exhibition. Cool. Man, this is a big-ass house. It is so big. All right, into this little closet space there. This is not where the creaking was coming from. That was purely the attic, for sure. Ah, uh, more notes. Man, Sam had this in the fourth grade. Oh, it's like a Lisa Frank thing. I love it. That's so funny. Grab book. The Holy Bibble. More Bibble stuff. I wonder if our, like, parents were super, super... Oh, mitten. Aw. Is this our kitty who's, like, no longer around? That's sad. Um, I feel like uh, our parents were, like, super religious, and maybe they just didn't get along with the idea of Sam doing all this stuff. Got your number. Like, especially, like, punk rock. Are you going to the dance with anyone? Oh, it's like a girl's, like, telephone game, and it's not even open. So I wonder if Sam... I wonder if Sam... All right, so I'm getting the vibe here, and obviously this might not be the case. Any secret passages? Anything? No? Uh, that maybe Sam was a lesbian. Uh, maybe she was gay and, and had feelings for Lonnie or other girls. She seems to have rejected a lot of the stereotypical girly stuff. This is obviously just a theory, and please no spoilers if you know the answer. But I, I'm getting that vibe from it. I could be completely off the mark here. Uh, but that's just the way that it feels like it's maybe setting it up. Maybe she had a, uh... A romantic relationship with Lonnie and that's why there's all this religious stuff around is her parents didn't agree with that so I don't know possibly here's the plaque is this the one she made in uh, in shop Samantha S is for special A is for adorable M is for Mary affectionate nice thoughtful oh uh, this is like the ones that like parents buy for their kids to be like your name's special and you're special and we love you all right, The King's Labyrinth, Chapter 2, Frank Threads, Captain Allegra, still in her flow. Oh, Captain Allegra again, like from the childhood story that Sam wrote. So in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and the first mate, on their own now, grew closer to their goal, the throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra, the silken thread nigh unbreakable, thanks to the enchanted moss that inhabited. So she was like, she took the idea from her childhood, ran with it, became like an accomplished writer in like high school, or maybe this was even from middle school. And clearly her teachers saw the potential in that, like at least her English teacher and was like, hey, you're a really good writer with a great sense of creativity, like and an amazing Im imagination. You should, you should go try this out. You should try to become a writer in college. That's really cool. I like that. I hope there's nothing waiting for me in here now. So I heard the creaky footsteps, but I turned off the light. Okay. Uh, read sternly worded letter. Why are, Why is there like a cork board out here? Daniel, could you, uh, could again, he wants his Nintendo game back. What? Oh, Daniel called again. Oh, we stole Daniel's Nintendo game. Sam, stop leaving every damn light on the house on. You're as bad as your sister. <laughs> Oh, that's so true. That's great that that note's there. I wonder if that's, like, predictive because they're like, I bet every 
every person who plays this game is going to be like, I don't want to walk around in the dark. I'm going to leave every light on. Uh, that's so funny. Or if that changes because of like how I've been playing it. It's really, really funny. Uh, so this is, I'm assuming they didn't see much of Sam because she's a teenager. She's out with friends. Cell phones didn't really exist. Uh, so she was like out and about. They left her little notes for her to get back to. So let's read the sternly worded letter. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, am 17 years old and am therefore an independent, fully functional human being. Oh man, that angsty teen chutzpah. You know, she's feeling like, ah, oh, you know, I'm a teenager. I know everything there is to know about life. I know how to do stuff. Stop pushing me around, Bob and Dad. It's a rite of passage. Every teen goes through that. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd compared with Katie, who is only three years older than me, and yet you allowed her to go all the way across an ocean to another continent on her own. I just want to spend an evening in a normal, totally safe city on my own like a human being. And since you may also remember that I have my own car now, you can't really stop me. Warmest regards, your daughter, Samantha. Damn. Sam. Sneaking out of the house, telling her parents off being a typical rebellious teen. All right, guys, I think honestly, we've made a lot of progress here. We explored the rest of the downstairs, except for the locked doors, obviously. Now we're upstairs doing a little bit of exploring here. I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. This game is still very spooky. All the like creaky floorboards, there's something up in the attic. I, I'm really, really worried about it. I'm very, very nervous about what's gonna happen in the attic, but we'll see what happens as we continue to play this in the next episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. I'm very invested in this family. Seriously, like I want to find out more. And if you guys want to find out more as well, please be sure to hit the like button, share the video in favor it. Also be sure to subscribe to me if you guys haven't already. For those of you who have, thank you so much for all of your support. You guys are the best in the world. I love every single one of you. And as always, it was great seeing ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>